just ahead. Why are Kiwi cancer patients waiting longer to get chemotherapy? Roaring engines and petrol fumes, the North Island city that's the new home of V8 car racing. They're supposed to save lives, but are these traffic slowing measures endangering people instead? A former Wimbledon champion joins the ranks of the supermodels. And it was once worth a penny, now this New Zealand stamp's worth a small fortune. Do join us in just a few minutes at six. of claiming millions for services it didn't deliver. Why health providers are under fire. Hamilton revs up for the biggest show in town. What the locals really think of V8s racing through their streets. It's a blooming marvel. The Kiwi creation set to make millions. And a tennis queen upstages the supermodels. How Maria Sharapova stole the swimsuit show. Also, why cancer patients are facing a longer wait for chemotherapy. And the huge price paid for our first penny stamp. But first, the opposition's demanding an inquiry into sloppy financial management by some of our major health providers. An agency that cares for disabled people was paid more than two million taxpayers' dollars for services it didn't provide. The organisation blames its computers and says it gave the money back. Focus 2000 is one of the largest providers of care for physically disabled people in Auckland. But it's now under fire for claiming millions of dollars for services it didn't provide. This is yet another example of sloppy accounting and poor financial management from the Ministry of Health. They've got a budget of billions of dollars. It's not getting to operations. It seems to be getting to a whole lot of mismanaged areas. An audit shows in three years, the agency owned by the Cerebral Palsy Society was paid $38 million. It now turns out at least $2 million of that was falsely claimed. That's why we did the full audit of them and when we had the discussion with Focus, Focus 2000, they discussed how the, the differences between that, the way they were doing it and what we expected and in the end they agreed and they repaid the money and they're now operating to the way we expect them to invoice us. Focus 2000 wouldn't appear on camera, but said in a radio interview the mistakes were because of software changes and the money's being repaid. Either you had a pretty slack system or this was a deliberate attempt to line your own pocket. This was, oh, come on. This was not a deliberate attempt. I mean, that, that's a shocking statement. But that hasn't satisfied some. We're calling for the Audit Office to launch an urgent investigation into the way that the Ministry of Health monitors its contracts. The Health Minister says he hasn't been briefed about the concerns and can't comment until he has. Francesca Mole, One News. Hospital payroll systems are also under fire after an audit found more than $700,000 had been mistakenly overpaid to health workers. One honest Auckland employee returned an unexpected $50,000 bonus following a payroll blunder. An anaesthetic technician working here at Auckland's Waitemata Health must have thought they'd hit the jackpot. Suddenly discovering an extra $53,000 in their bank account thanks to a mistake by their employer. Well, this is bureaucracy gone mad. The fact that someone can be overpaid $53,000 that managers don't even notice that this person's being overpaid and they approve it is just appalling. The accidental payment last month was picked up but staff at Health Alliance, the agency that handles payroll at Waitemata and County's Manukau Health, still signed it off. The mistake was later discovered, the money returned, and the staff at fault disciplined. We have had some issues with our payroll. I mean, typically in any payroll system, um, you have, sometimes you have errors, because a lot of the processing that we do currently is done manually by payroll staff. The other issue we have in healthcare is that the, the collective agreements are incredibly complicated and trying to interpret them sometimes, um, you know, raises a whole lot of issues. But the overpayment may be just the tip of the iceberg. An audit report shows more than $700,000 has been mistakenly paid out to health workers. It also says there are significant issues with payroll at counties Manukau and Waitemata because of inexperienced staff. Financial control systems were downgraded from a good rating two years ago to just adequate, although the health board says other auditors rate it as satisfactory. The DHB says it's also changing from a paper-based system to an electronic one, which should improve its accuracy. We think we've got a, a process to resolve it, and I'm um, confident we'll do that. Chris Farfoy, One News. 
Hamilton is bracing for some high-octane excitement. The city's revving up to host a V8 supercar race through the streets of suburban Frankton. And so far, locals are right behind their council's bid for the biggest sports event in town. Absolutely awesome. Big thing for Hamilton. We're really stuck. We think it's great. It's probably one of the few times you can get Ford and Holden fans to agree. They're rearing to have the Australian V8 supercar race right in their own backyard. I didn't even know that they were, we were trying to get it and woke up this morning and heard it on the news and thought, it's not the 1st of April, it can't be a joke. If this doesn't put Hamilton on the map, then I can't think of what will. After missing out on Auckland and Wellington, the company behind the race is relieved to finally be given the nod. I think Hamilton's a great location. It's a very beautiful location. Uh, it'll look fantastic on our worldwide TV pictures. Um, it's very centrally located in the North Island. Proposed route follows a series of streets in Frankton just west of Hamilton CBD, an area full of small factories and appropriately car yards. Track engineers today checking out the venue say it could be one of the best tracks on the V8 supercar calendar. This is probably in, in the long term going to be better than the Gold Coast. Um, and I think this will be superior to uh, the Adelaide circuit. Ooh, very uh, nice. Uh, Keepers are like that. <laughs> I was so excited. I turned around and texted my husband, go, they're coming to Hamilton. Straight past where we were working. We're going to build our own grandstand. <laughs> oh, yeah? If we're allowed. It's estimated 200,000 spectators would attend the three-day event with a financial benefit for the city of $175 million over the seven-year contract. But there's still one speed bump. The racers have yet to get resource consent. But the mayor says if Hamilton can't get it, then nowhere can. But it's already a done deal for the fans. Now, nah, mate, I wouldn't want everything. <laughs> I will see. <laughs> Erica Wood, One News. Auckland cancer patients are going to be waiting much longer for chemotherapy treatment. Others may also face delays blamed on a huge increase in demand and not enough specialist doctors. It's a letter no cancer specialist wants to write. It's being sent to Auckland chemotherapy patients next week, telling them they'll face a delay to start treatment due to an oncologist shortage. But unfortunately for the majority of people, that's around about four to six weeks. Uh, before they'll actually be seen by the specialist and then another few weeks before they'll actually receive their treatment. Raylene Hewitt knows how that feels. She waited 11 weeks to start chemo in Auckland last year. It is absolutely devastating to think that you don't know from day to day what is going to happen to you. Doctors agree it's unacceptable. I look at it and think, well, if I was sitting at home and had been diagnosed with cancer, what would I want? I'd want to see an oncologist or if I'd couldn't see them, I'd want to know that at least I was going to see them and, and when it was. And it's a problem compounded by a big rise in the amount of chemotherapy being dispensed. Canterbury's volume rise has been the highest at 44%, Otago's has risen 30 Auckland's 15 to 20, Mid Central's 17 per cent. Wellington and Waikato's are lowest but still up 5 to 10 per cent. We were not predicting that degree of increase but uh, we have still got new treatments coming on stream uh, and they will be knocking at the door and uh, patients' expectations will be that, that they can access some of these new treatments coming on stream. But health ministry experts say the chemo rise is not entirely unexpected and is due to more patients, more complex treatments and better availability of newer drugs. But they acknowledge there are problems which they say working parties are trying hard to resolve. Raylene Hewitt's awaiting test results to see if her cancer has returned. If it has, she too may now have to rejoin Auckland's growing chemotherapy queue. Laurelie Mason, One News. Meanwhile, a decision on funding the breast cancer drug Herceptin for early stage treatment has been put off until it's registered for such use. Herceptin's currently funded for late stage breast cancer, but overseas trials show that if used earlier, it can halve the risk of recurrence. A Pharmac committee says not enough is yet known about the drug's safety. The United States has condemned the release of horrific new pictures of its troops abusing Iraqi prisoners in Baghdad's notorious Abu Ghraib jail. The images, which may disturb some viewers, have set off a new round of Arab protests against America's presence in Iraq. The images till now kept from public view. New grim testimony of what went on in Abu Ghraib jail. Shown on Australian TV today, naked Iraqi prisoners positioned for the camera. Close-ups of injuries, gunshot wounds from non-lethal rounds, telltale pools of blood on the prison floor, graphic, brutal scenes, which tonight the US State Department called disgusting, 
but regretted the pictures being shown. This was a uh, extremely unfortunate uh, event, uh, but we have held people accountable fully. It's all part of the same abuse at Abu Ghraib in the early days of the US-led occupation that first emerged in 2004. Images of Iraqis paraded on a leash and menaced by dogs caused uproar worldwide. At the time, the US Defense Secretary, Donald Rumsfeld, admitted to a shocked US Senate that there was worse to come. There are many more photographs and indeed some videos. But now those extra pictures have been made public, Mr. Rumsfeld is making no comment. Today he cancelled a press appearance. Several low-ranking U.S. soldiers have been sent to prison, but only one senior officer has been reprimanded. And in the U.S., civil liberties groups want the case reopened. Tonight, on the Arab TV channel Al Jazeera, the new photos were a top headline. Some Muslims have already been incensed by the Danish cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. And in southern Iraq today, a protest against this week's pictures of British troops apparently beating Iraqis. The Abu Ghraib abuse scandal isn't new, but these latest images could still fan the flames. U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney has broken his silence over accidentally shooting and seriously wounding a fellow bird hunter. Cheney's accepted full responsibility and defended his decision not to publicly disclose the incident until the next day. Uh, I fired and there's Harry falling and uh, it was, uh, I'd have to say, one of the worst days of my life. The wounded hunter is still in hospital with a bird shot pellet lodged in his heart. Well, it's normally a cool blue, but now it also comes in a romantic red. New Zealand scientists have created a beautiful flower that's set to be a blooming success for our floral exporters. The blooming of a new export crop, the red gentian. Till now, gentians have been blue. It's been a favourite with florists here for over a century. But the Japanese wanted a red one for their winter market. They tried to breed it, but couldn't. Now, after 10 years of research, Kiwi scientists have produced not only a red, but also a hot pink gentian. Most of us won't see much difference between these two cultivars, but this red one and this bright pink one are really quite different to the florist and flower breeder. And they say the new fashion flowers will be worth millions of dollars in exports. We're very excited about it. The Japanese love it. They want it, and they're really enthused about it. So enthused, in fact, they've already formed a joint venture company with New Zealand growers to supply the new line of gentians. They're an export product that's going to uh, provide you and I with more money coming into the country. So it's, it's a good example of what science can do to lift what is an agricultural product and make it even more valuable. Crop and food research are also experimenting with a wide range of other flowers. These satanthus have been bred with long stems and an extra long vase life and are already headed to markets in the United States and Europe. The scientists say floriculture is driven by fashion and they'll always be looking for new flowers. John Newton, One News. Neil's here with Sport later just before he heads off to the cricket and Stephen Fleming not getting caught up in the hype of 2020. Oh, I think he's a bit concerned about a long season for some of the players, Wendy. So the Black Cap skipper is urging everyone to take a deep breath. Also coming up, the multi-millionaire who turns his back on Canada to win gold for Australia. And the man they call Sugarfoot warms up for his first home bout in almost a decade. Coming up next on the news though, why shopping trolleys have more germs than public toilet door handles. Sold for a record price, a New Zealand stamp that's licked them all. And breaking out of his shell, the tiny kiwi that's a long way from home. Ready to play? Revlon introduces a light sweat-proof makeup that can keep up with you. New Color Stay Active Light Makeup with Soft Flex. Wears long, feels light. Cushion polymers move with your skin for a full day of smooth, natural coverage that's sweat-proof, sun-proof, rub-off-proof. Stay busy. Stay beautiful. No sweat? New Color Stay Active Light Makeup. Only from Revlon. We're having a massive market weekend at Briscoe. And you'll get a massive 20 to 50% off the normal retail price of all bedware and all kitchenware. 
These pencil pleat ready-made curtains half price. Get 30% off all electric fry pans. All hand-painted dinnerware has 40% off and save 20 to 40% off these Playboy bedroom coordinates. Hurry in for 20 to 50% off all bedware and kitchenware this weekend at Briscoe's. I'm Victoria Smith. I'm Libby Nelson. I'm 23 years old. I'm 24 years old. I was born in New Zealand in Gisborne. I was born in New Zealand in Hawke's Bay. I have no children. Me neither. And I'm a nurse. Me too. And we need to know how many more nurses we're going to need to look after us when we're older. <laughs> the 2006 census is coming. We're going to grow, so we need to know. I'm really cheap. Cotton Soft's toilet tissue has style, softness, strength and affordability all rolled into one. Ah, bless my little Cotton Softs. Someone's going to win a stay at four lodges that are rated in the world's top 20. Isn't that just fabulous? It is good. It's very, very good. But it's not fabulous. We're fabulous. It's amazingly good, but fabulous? Nah, that's us. <laughs> At Morehouse Furniture, we want to help you hold on to that leisurely summer feeling. Interest-free all the way to 2009. Purchase the furniture you love right now and you'll pay absolutely nothing for one year. You'll find the perfect addition for your home and then pay nothing for one year, plus no deposit and no interest until 2009 store-wide. So relax and enjoy a leisurely lifestyle on the furniture you love. More brands, more value, more service. More for your house, Morehouse Furniture. Retire in style. Kate Shepherd's new condominiums are the ultimate in luxury living. Enjoy the spacious one or two bedroom apartments or one of our expansive three bedroom, two bathroom penthouse suites. Latest design features include granite tops and stainless steel appliances, lifts to all floors, 24 hour security access, nurse call and stunning lakeside views. Expressions of interest are welcome. Call Kate Shepherd today. Victims of an Auckland bus driver's violent road rage attack are furious. Police haven't yet interviewed the driver. The stagecoach employee allegedly tried to drag a woman from a car and then knocked down this man who came to her aid. The company has given the driver 48 hours to explain his side of the incident. A leaked memo has highlighted doubts within the National Party over its one law for all message on race relations. The pledge proved a big vote winner for leader Don Brash two years ago, but it seems the slogan was much easier to deliver than the policy. It was controversial and in your face. And a simple slogan summed up the race debate, which launched Don Brash's political career two years ago. I want people to be dealt with by government on the basis of need, not on the basis of race. But in a leaked strategy paper, National now admits it just isn't that simple. Jerry Brownlee's memo says any look at the negative statistics in crime, health or education shows that the need does lie, mainly with Māori. From January 2004, the National Party, through its leader, set out to convey an utterly false picture of New Zealand where Māori was somehow privileged. National also promised to remove unnecessary references to the Treaty of Waitangi from legislation, but now admits that's no simple task either. I think it's fine to have a reference to the Treaty of Waitangi in the Tainui Settlement Bill. I think it's ridiculous having it in the Land Transport Bill. And I think it's uh, a matter of going through all of those bills and sorting out where it fits and where it doesn't. The National Party memo says post-election negotiations with the Māori Party helped foster a growing perception the party had softened its line on race. Any perception that we've backed off the idea that New Zealanders should all be treated as equals before the law is wrong. But there are MPs in National who wouldn't mind if that perception the party is taking a softer line on Māori issues does take hold. While the race debate has been hugely successful for National, some MPs believe it's now served its purpose and it's time the party built bridges with Māoridom and moved on. Guy and Espiner, One News. Concerns growing for a 30-year-old Northland woman who's been missing since Friday. Christelle de Vetten was last seen at her rural property near Kerikeri. Police have examined her house and the surrounding area. Her family says the disappearance of the mother of one is out of character. The fire that destroyed an Ōtaki factory last month will cost up to 27 workers their jobs. The owners of the Pacific's Plastics plant hoped that work and income would financially support employees until the factory was rebuilt later in the year. 
but the government agency says it can't do that and managers can't afford to keep paying staff. Arsonists are suspected of, are suspected of sparking the fire. New research has found that shopping trolleys carry more bacteria than public toilet doorknobs, but supermarkets say customers have nothing to fear. Germs. They're everywhere. But new research overseas says it's the handy shopping trolley that carries the most. Got to do the shopping. I can't carry the groceries around. <laughs> well, sometimes you pick them up and your hands are quite sticky with them, yeah. So sticky, in fact, the Korean research of six common public items found shopping trolleys led the way with 1,100 units of bacteria per 10 square centimetres. Next up, the internet cafe computer mouse, bus hand straps, bathroom doorknobs and the least bacteria ridden elevator buttons. Probably more people using shopping trolleys than using the toilet doorknobs, so more hands, more bacteria. Supermarkets here say they do clean their trolleys, but only on a one to three month basis. It's got a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of effort in making sure that the products sold to consumers is absolutely top notch. Uh, as part of that, we regularly clean our shopping trolleys. And even the experts can't agree on how great the risk is. There is nothing in life which is sterile, so that to think sterility is important is, is just excessive. The problem perhaps with shopping trolleys is that some of these bacteria might be transferred from one person to another, then the people might go home and cook their food and transfer those bacteria onto the food. So if all surfaces are covered in bugs that are dangerous to our health, perhaps we should walk out the door wearing these. Juliet McVeigh, One News. The European Union has banned the import of feathers as the deadly strain of bird flu continues to spread. Germany's confirmed its first case of the virus. It was found in two dead swans on Rügen Island in the Baltic Sea. The strain's also been confirmed in Italy and Greece. More charges against the fashion industry high flyer already before the courts in connection with a multi-million dollar drug haul. Insidious fix boss Jason Crawford has been accused of receiving around $600,000 worth of stolen goods, including a jet ski and cars. He'll be back in court next month. A man who admitted a charge relating to the horrific abuse of a dog has been jailed for another six months. Uwe Proust of Lower Hutt admitted stealing the dog and failing to alleviate its pain and stress. Proust, who's already serving a sentence for burglary, had also been charged with aggravated cruelty to a cat, but those charges were dropped. Native insects could help halt the invasion of Didymo, the algae, clogging up our southern waterways. Research at Otago University shows that the larvae of several native insects eat didymo. It's hoped they could keep some rivers in check. Researchers hope further studies will reveal more about didymo and its place in the food chain. 150 years ago, our first stamp was worth just a penny. Now it's valued at $185,000 after fetching a record price for a New Zealand stamp at a London auction. A fresh-faced queen was what we first licked onto our letters in 1855. Very, very rare and unused condition. There's only a handful of them known throughout the world. The auctioneers have estimated it at uh, between 30 to 35,000 pounds. John Mowbray's here to try to bring the stamp and others like it home. This is part of New Zealand's heritage. But he faces stiff competition in the illustrious auction house of Sotheby's. Two it's nail-biting stuff watching the pounds soar past 40,000, and so's this. Motor racing and the more sedate hobby of stamp collecting mightn't have a lot in common, but Sir Gawain Bailey succeeded in both. He raced with legend Sterling Moss and had an eye for first edition stamps from Great Britain and the British Empire. When Sir Gawain Bailey was asked about his collection, he'd reply yes, he had a few stamps. But it wasn't until he died three years ago that his family discovered his huge collection. His 15,000 posted stamps are now considered to be one of the most comprehensive collections of its time. His whole collection is estimated to be worth $40 million, and this is the largest ever auction of New Zealand stamps. The stamps are mint ones. They're New Zealand stamps that have never been postmarked. Selling now. 60,000. The jewel in the crown, SG1, won't be earmarked for arrival in New Zealand any time soon. It was sold to a British buyer. Melissa Stokes, One News, London.
And another auction record has been set in New York where a single photograph sold for more than $4 million. The Pond Moonlight, taken in 1904, is considered one of the best early landscapes by American Edward Stetchen. With a photograph like this, Edward Steichen uh, showed the world that photography could rival the emotional content of painting. A private collector bought the photo for three times the expected price. Well, Susan's along now with what's coming up tonight on Close Up and a former kids' TV presenter working with criminals these days. And they are loving him. Prison rehab programs have come under fire, but Ollie Olsen's running a course which is getting results. So is long-term change really possible for violent offenders? Plus, Dick Cheney, well, he's become the butt of jokes right across America on American telly, so we've got some of it. We'll see you at 7 for a laugh. Look forward to it. Ahead on One News, the road safety initiative that could be actually killing people, a baby Kiwi's early delivery. The Cuban comics with a strong local connection. And trying out a new racket, a tennis star serves notice to the supermodels. I don't think this has any future whatsoever. Never seen anything quite so ridiculous. I'm also not going to invest. I have to say, I think it's fabulous. Dragon's Den, tonight on One. At the National Bank, we have more ways to help small business. Whatever your line of business, talk to the National Bank on 0800 16 88 88. Please, miss, I've run out of paper. Please, miss, I've run out of purple. Please, miss, I'm running out of breakfast. Don't let your kids run on empty. Make sure they have Kellogg's Sultana Bran. A diet high in fiber helps kids feel full between meals. One bowl of Sultana Bran gives an eight-year-old nearly half their daily fiber needs. And they love all those juicy Sultanas. Kellogg's Sultana Bran. It's fulfilling and it's fun. Get down to your local lotto store and you can drive away in one of ten sporty European-style Holden Astros. And we've even filled them up for you. With cash, that is. $50,000 cash. So buy a triple dip today for your chance to win one of ten stylish Holden Astros full of $50,000 cash. Lotto. How great would it feel? Here's what's making news tonight. National's demanding an inquiry into the sloppy financial management of some major health providers. Focus 2000, which cares for the disabled, claimed at least $2 million of taxpayers' money for services it didn't provide. It's repaid the money and is blaming computer problems. Auckland cancer patients could have to wait up to 11 weeks for chemotherapy treatment. Patients in other areas may also face delays because of big increases in demand and not enough specialist doctors. And the board of TVNZ is facing contempt of parliament charges over its disciplinary action against former CEO Ian Fraser. The board accused Mr Fraser of serious misconduct after he criticised it at a select committee hearing last year. Now it faces a grilling from parliament's powerful privileges committee. Road changes aimed at saving pedestrians' lives could be claiming them instead. People are mistaking the raised platforms in busy urban areas for zebra crossings, with up to 50 people a year being killed or injured. A pedestrian crossing or just a traffic calming measure? Sometimes the drivers decide to stop and sometimes they don't. The platforms are becoming increasingly popular as local authorities strive to slow traffic down to reduce pedestrian deaths but they may be doing the opposite. It's this sort of traffic calming measure that's causing so much confusion for both pedestrians and drivers. It looks like a pedestrian crossing, but it's actually not. Do you think that's a pedestrian crossing? Uh, yeah. It just doesn't look like your normal pedestrian crossing. Sometimes the traffic doesn't stop. Do you think that this is a pedestrian crossing? No. Both, um, not officially. Like I would stop for someone walking across. People are unconsciously playing Russian roulette every time they use them. Anytime people are being injured and in fact killed, it, it's a, a big concern. And, uh, you know, it, it comes down to pedestrians and motorists both needing to, uh, to know the rules and to know what's a pedestrian crossing and what's not. I think the problem for pedestrians and drivers alike is 
a lack of uniformity in markings for crossings, so both, both of them are confused who's got right away. Wellington has one of the highest pedestrian casualty rates in the country. Uh, unfortunately, some of them have been hit on these platforms. So we, we're going to have a, a public education campaign. The rules are simple. Cars should slow but are not obliged to stop for pedestrians as they must at a zebra crossing. Those on foot can use them too, but they shouldn't assume drivers will give way. Jennifer Curtis, One News. A pest that costs North Island farmers millions in lost production every year has now been found in the South Island. Clover root weevil causes significant degradation to paddocks and has been discovered for the first time by scientists near Christchurch Airport. While the weevil can't be eradicated, more applications of nitrogen can mitigate its effects. Now, updating this week's story about a kiwi egg at Washington Zoo. After 64 days, it's finally hatched. The new chick's only the second kiwi born at the zoo. It emerged a few days early, so it's in an incubator. The risk of infection means no visitors are allowed. They've performed for Madonna, Elton John, Robbie Williams and other big name celebrities. Now they're here for the Splore Music Festival this weekend near Thames. But that's only part of the Kiwi Connection. Hola friends, hermanos cubanos, let's go today. The Cuban brothers are an international dance and comedy sensation, despite being neither Cuban nor brothers. In fact, beneath the fedora, the fake hair and the fake tan, league brother Miguel Mantovani is half Kiwi, and his real name is Mike yes. Pete. Uh, like I'm half jock, uh, about a quarter Maori. I don't know what the other quarter is, eh, but uh, it's pretty choice. On dos tres. He's been running the Cuban brothers for eight years, but he still finds it hard to explain exactly what they do. Oh, there's a couple of uh, three or four Scottish fellas, eh? Uh, Kiwi and uh, get dressed up as Cubans and break dance and end up in the pants. Just sounds, just sounds ridiculous. So it's, it's not it's something you need to see. It's you know it's a celebration. Whatever they call it, the brothers' blend of smooth sounds and cheesy antics has seen them on stage at some high-profile gigs. They've performed for Robbie Williams, Elton John, and Paris Hilton. Fellow dancer Madonna is another fan. She even wanted them to do a video with her, but the brothers said they were too busy. We've done a few private parties for her, but so a lot of cats will say, oh, you, you know, you've worked with this celebrity or that. So it doesn't mean anything, really. At the end of the day, you know, we, we do the same show for 10 cats as we do for 10,000. And no doubt there will be thousands of cats enjoying the show in the weekend. Olivia Kemba, One News. Tennis queen Maria Sharapova has upstaged the supermodels at the world's most popular photo shoot. She outshone a glamorous lineup for this year's Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. New Zealand's Rachel Hunter was among the beauties, but it was the Russian star's beach poses that caught everyone's attention. The former world number one hasn't won a tournament this year, but despite her obvious modelling potential, Sharapova has no plans to give up her day job. I'm honored to be in it, so, but I don't think you'll see me doing photo shoots and bathing suits very often in my career. The magazine Swimsuit Edition is avidly perused by 64 million adults in the U.S. alone and available in 12 languages, so fairly popular then. Yes, so. <laughs> I'm sure Neil will like it. Neil, no, I'm more interested in cricket, though, of course. More interested in the tennis, like... looking oh, at the oh, tennis. Oh, okay, the game. Don't even sure. notice that. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's okay. been a long time between drinks in the internationals here, hasn't it? But it is cricket time again tonight as the Black Caps take on the West Indies in a 2020 match at Eden Park. Coach John Bracewell believes it's a fantastic opportunity to build for the World Cup, despite critics suggesting the match is nothing more than a festival game. Um, 2020 gives us the ideal opportunity to develop our um, Duckworth Lewis uh, game, um, just in case at any tournament that we may be at. You get a range short and match these are the sort of ideal situations where you can practice those. The ICC are considering a 2020 World Championship, although it's not likely to find favour with the New Zealand captain. I think they see the, the numbers and the money that's involved with it. Uh, what I see is caution, just with where it fits in. Congested calendar as it is, you start adding too many of these and then uh, you start to question where the other forms of the game lie. The ICC is also set to hit the controversial Super Sub concept for six when it meets in Dubai next month. We've got more sport for you after the break. Almost after 1,500 nautical miles at sea, the Volvo leaders reach Wellington and are separated by seconds. Plus, Eddie Jones spreads the word in New Zealand and tells us why Australian rugby is struggling. 
and a rare sight for New Zealand football fans, the All Whites preparing for a home international. Last year, Sunday brought you the stories that mattered. The virus is changing. Just stupidity. And brought you the people behind those stories. You'll hear from us. I'm going to chance to say goodbye to my daughter. But I don't want to talk to you. This year, you can expect the same. Let's get up. You mean to uphold the law? Oh, tiger country. Gave no him. comment to make. Planted the bomb. Join me and the Sunday team. Returning 7.30 Sunday on one. 9.05 tonight, join Prime for the toughest rugby competition in the world. The Super 14 Game of the Week, Hurricanes versus the Force. 9.05 tonight on Prime. deals with more dirt in one day than the rest of your skin does in a week. So the least you can do is look after it with new Dettol Moisture Hand Wash. It gives you a deep down clean and it's enriched with conditioners to help leave your skin feeling soft. Dettol Moisture Hand Wash for healthy feeling skin. Want a Zodiac easy to install pool for summer? You can knock it up in no time at all and they don't cost a bomb. Get the pool lifestyle at an affordable price. Para pools, better than a beach in your own backyard. Drinking yogurt is the fastest growing dairy product in Europe. EZO is part of the success with the new wild berry and tropical mango drinking yogurts also now available in New Zealand. Made so simply in your EZO yogurt maker, EZO drinking yogurt contains FloraFit Boost, probiotic ABC cultures specifically designed to help support your immune system. EZO is quick, healthy and oh so yummy and now comes with a flip top lid on the EZO jar for easy pouring. EZO drinking yogurt at your supermarket now. I've got to win it back. I need to double my bet. You promised you'd be here. Who's got the gambling problem? You can do something about it. Call the gambling helpline. It's your choice. Hey, it says here your car performed really badly in independent crash tests. New Zealand has witnessed some very tight ocean race finishes over the years, but the finale to leg three of the Volvo Ocean Race to Wellington was a classic. After almost 1,500 nautical miles at sea, the two leaders were separated by seconds. Breakfast this morning on Movie Star would have been a nervy celebration, the Spanish boat erasing the lead of ABN AMRO 1. It happened so quickly. I mean, one skid we had a 32-mile lead, and the next skid, uh, you know, we didn't even need to wait for the next skid. We could see them. From then on, their eyes never left each other. By lunchtime, the gap had closed again and kept closing. 1,450 miles and it comes to this. Match racing at Wellington Harbour. We've been watching the tacking duel, AB and AMRO 1, gradually closing in on Movie Star. And now they're in a straight race for the line. As the wind picked up, AB and AMRO 1 looked significantly quicker. But Movie Star just hung on. 
if you know, like as soon as the bridge is over 15, 16 knots, they're really fast upwind. So I was just keeping the nerves together and we made it. The biggest movie star smile belonged to its Kiwi watch captain, reunited with his hometown and his girls. Epic, just unbelievable. We're so happy to hold those guys off. Uh, it was probably the last day and a half or so we were within sight of them, so it was a pretty long match race and sort of had its ups and downs and we were just happy to hold them off. Awesome to finish first into Wellington. Second place still increased AB and Amro One's overall lead and they certainly enjoyed the duel. I mean, it was amazing yachting. Yeah, we certainly threw everything at them. We actually crossed them a couple of times. And, um, yeah, I mean, what was it, nine seconds in the end. The crews have three days for recuperation and repairs before the race restarts on Sunday. Martin Tasker, One News. <laughs> As we reported earlier, Hamilton looks likely to host V8 supercar racing on a street circuit from 2008. The man who's dominated the New Zealand rounds until now at Pukekohe is delighted, although still a little sceptical. Yeah, unfortunately, New Zealand's got that uh, ridiculous law of um, this resource consent rubbish, and, and, um, which has made it very difficult for Wellington and, and um, you know, Auckland. Murphy admits if Hamilton does pull it off, it'll be a great fix for what's been an ongoing problem. All Black halfback Byron Kelleher has been given the axe by the Chiefs after just one Super 14 rugby game. He'll be on the bench for Sunday morning's game against the Cats with Jamie Nutbrown starting at halfback. And two Crusaders will join a select band of players to make a hundred appearances in Super Rugby this weekend. Former All Black captain Ruben Thorne will start against the Reds in Queensland, joining fellow hundred club members Tana Umanga, Justin Marshall and Anton Oliver. I always remember the, the first Super 12 that we won back in 98 against the Blues. Uh, I was away from home against the odds, against the star-studded team, and uh, we managed to pull it off, so you know, that will always be a special one for me. Utility back Caleb Ralph will also mark his 100th appearance after stints with the Blues, the Chiefs and the Crusaders, but he'll need to pass a fitness test because of a minor quad injury. For the last five years, Eddie Jones has been one of the All Blacks' arch rivals, but this week the former Wallabies coach crossed enemy lines to assist up-and-comers in New Zealand. And while he says he's over his sacking, he still has concerns about the state of Australian rugby. Now that he's not Wallabies coach, Eddie Jones doesn't mind sharing his coaching secrets. And, and so that's the key. How do you get through? How firstly do you watch the performance? Jones has been in Palmerston North this week coaching at Murray Mexted's Rugby Academy. He even Probably ran into his old enemy, Graham Henry. We had a, a bit of a bite to eat, to eat in, uh, in very friendly terms as opposed to uh, being warriors in the past, but uh, no, it was nice to catch up to Graham. Nice now because Jones no longer needs to worry about trying to outdo Henry. His main concern now, a three-year contract with the Queensland Reds, which he'll begin in June. The Wallaby job he held for five years no longer his after his axing in December. But he says he feels no bitterness. Certainly at the time you do, but I've moved on from that now. I've got you know, a number of interests going forward and, and I'm more focused on the future than the past. But Jones can still see what's wrong with Australian rugby. I look at his body position. He didn't even make 90 there. And set pieces become so much more important than probably it was three or four years ago and, and we've just failed to develop our skills and failed to develop the talent in those areas. And while he hopes to help the situation when he's at the Reds, before he starts there, he'll be doing a review of Pacific Island coaching structures for the IRB. Now we've got a lot of problems in our own country in terms of rugby, and whilst we're, we're certainly uh, sympathetic towards the island, we haven't done it much ourselves, and it's really up to the IRB. Jones heads back to Australia tonight before yet another commitment, a brief stint with the Saracens Club in England. Katie Bayliss, One News. And Wallaby back Matt Rogers has spoken for the first time since his father Steve committed suicide last month. Rogers admits his life is in turmoil and he's needing counselling to get through. Just sort of wish, you know, I was there for him. I've heard people say that it's selfish, you know, suicide and stuff, but man, I reckon it was the bravest thing he's ever done to be able to sit there and write notes to his three kids and his wife and then do what he did. Rogers says he flirted with quitting rugby but changed his mind because his father would want him to continue playing. One of the longest droughts in New Zealand soccer's history finally ends on Sunday when the All Whites play at home for the first time since 2002. And while it may be hard to get excited about their opponents, Malaysia, there are some world-class opponents on the horizon. Spotting a mower in the last four years would have been easier than seeing these guys train. Yet today, the All Whites assemble to prepare for their first home game since 2002. 
albeit against Malaysia. The players are delighted to have a couple of football matches and I'm sure the public is, but uh, yeah, I agree, it's been a little bit frustrating, but uh, it's arrived, so looking forward to it. Not even the record snowstorms on America's east coast were going to stop New York-based Stephen Old from playing. Any game for the Oasis is worth it. Any game, if we're playing 210th in the world or the number one in the world, every single game is worth playing for the Oasis. UK-based Leo Bertos has gained a release from Scarborough for these two games. He intends to be playing back in England Saturday week. Got here yesterday, five in the morning, so it's pretty, pretty sharp. Just get, come here straight into training, and then I think we leave the day after the last game. So we're in the middle of the season, so I've got to get back and play. And with nine uncapped players in the 20-man squad, no one's kidding themselves. It'll be easy. While Ryan Nelson and Simon Elliott aren't available for the relative small fry of Malaysia, that's about to change. It's understood New Zealand soccer are on the verge of announcing three games against quality South American opposition tomorrow. So for everyone, there's extra incentive to prove themselves against Malaysia. Craig Stanaway, One News. Australia has won its first goal of the Winter Olympics in Torino and it's gone to a 21-year-old Canadian-born internet millionaire. Dale Begg-Smith left Canada and moved to Australia six years ago because his moguls training interfered with the business. Now he's succeeding in both. Even by Winter Olympic standards, the moguls are spectacular. And new Olympic champion Dale Begg-Smith is a spectacular story. Begg-Smith left Vancouver for Australia when he was 15. Now, just six years later, there's a multi-million dollar internet business and an Olympic gold medal. Olympic glory's taken a bit longer for the women's downhill champ, 32-year-old Austrian Michaela Dorfmeister. She'd won a World Cup, been a world champion, but until today, she had one big gap on the mantelpiece. After setting the pace, she had to wait as others failed to beat her time before celebrating her first Olympic gold. The controversial luge tracks claimed more victims, this time in the men's doubles. First, it was the American team, silver medalists four years ago. No such luck this time. Then, more seriously, the Ukrainian pair. One of them was flown to hospital with head injuries. But managing to stay on, Austrian brothers Andreas and Wolfgang Linger. They had a nasty crash here at training last year, but no worries this time, the Austrians grabbing gold. And for shot of the day, something a bit slower, but no less impressive. This from Sweden's Annette Norgerg. Her last stone had to be perfect to beat Great Britain in the women's curling, and it was. Paul Moore, One News. K1 fighter Ray Sugarfoot Sefor hasn't fought at home in eight years, has never held an open training session, and has never won the coveted K1 Grand Prix. Today he knocked out one of those statistics. Ray Sefor opened his training doors for the first time, showing why he's feared in the world of K1. Preparing for his first match in New Zealand since 1998, Sefor will take on two-time K1 world champion Remy Bonjeski in March, a rematch of their 2001 bout in which Bonjeski took the honours. I'm really excited about this one because number one, I'm fighting at home, and number two, I'm in top shape, and number three, uh, I'm ready to kick some ass, so it's going to be a good event. A five-time K1 Grand Prix finalist. Body shots from it's a title that still eludes the Samoan powerhouse. And then when it comes to Grand Prix, I'm a, I think I'm actually burnt out. And so this year, uh, it's the first time I've actually fought in the beginning of the year in a long time. So this year, I think we're going to fight March, and then I think the next one is uh, July, September, and then the Grand Prix. So we just, I think, uh, would be ideal. We'll give it a go again this year, see what happens. Seffel's ideal venue for the rematch, home. When you fight in front of your own hometown, you, you know, you feel that love and support. And, and we get that love and support in Japan, but it's different when it's your own background. With a 50% knockout record, he probably won't need too much support. Jenny May Coffin, One News. It's great to see him back. Our New Zealand golfer Michael Long has made a great start to the Jacobs Creek Open in Adelaide. He shot a six under par 66, including an albatross two on a par five. He is tied for the lead. Now, that's incredible, that an albatross. That's three under par. Even the pros don't score very many of those oh, in their lives. I've only done a couple. <laughs> I've only done a couple. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> well, in financial news now, Kiwi Bank has doubled its profits over the past six months to $5.4 million. Now has more than 400,000 customers and home loans worth $2 billion. Let's have a look at the markets now. The top 50 index fell 20 points on turnover of $136 million. Telecom down another 10 cents. 
PGG writes and reported a maiden half-year profit but fell six cents, blaming a slowing rural economy. Michael Hill's half-year earnings dropped 5% after difficult Christmas trading. AMP fell sharply despite a 24% profit rise and announcing a 40 cents per share capital return. But bucking the trend, steel and tube climbed five, even though its net profit fell. And on the money markets, the New Zealand dollar is slightly weaker against most right now. Close ups along next. What have you got for us, Susan? Wendy, tonight, prison rehab programs are under attack. The claim is that they just don't work. But a familiar face is running a course which is getting results. And Hugh Sunday makes a Kiwi Music Legends Day. It was discussed how that totally looked staged, but it actually was. <laughs> See you in just a few minutes. Thanks, Susan. After the break, though, Karen's here with Blue Skies tomorrow for most places. Good. Who's that girl? The Variety Annual Appeal. You can help by buying your band at Countdown. You'll be a winner with these great prizes from Hammer. Prestige rubbish bins with sturdy metal handles from just $14.95. This span-built galvanised steel garden shed with skillion roof is just $299. The Innovair Robocan 2 insect repellent pack is just $79.95. And buy 10 litres of wattle solar guard or forest wood and get one of these sunshades free. But only at Hammer, it's your local. Imagine you're 60. You've saved $2,000 a year since you were 20. Your mate Brian didn't start till he was 40, but he went for it. He saved $4,000 a year. Who's got the most money now? Probably him, because he's saving more a year. Myself, if I've earned interest over that time. Same, it's exactly the same. That's what they think. What do you think? Vote at sorted.org.nz. And while you're there, check out our range of independent calculators. The producer could make more money with a flop than he had. You bloody little genius! You made a fool out of him! Poor Tip is dead. Is there anything like death? Yes. Nathan Lane, Matthew Broderick, Will Ferrell, and Uma Thurman, the producers. My name's Sansan Tupuro. I was born on the 24th of June, 1982. I rent a house in Auckland, which I share with my girlfriend and my newborn baby boy. The main source of heating in the house is electricity. I'm an apprentice builder, and what I need to know is how many houses I need to build and when I should think about buying out my boss. Thanks. The 2006 census is coming. We're going to grow, so we need to know. <laughs> Junior's finding his feet, but his bottom's finding the floor. Kleenex Cottonelle has unique cushiony softness. You have to feel to believe. That's strong. Kleenex Cottonelle, looking out for the family. You haven't mentioned anything which I'm about a little night out together, have you? No, why don't you want me to? I think we should just keep it as our little secret. What do you reckon? Coronation Street, next. You haven't mentioned anything which I'm about a little night out together, have you? No, why don't you want me to? I think we should just keep it as our little secret. What do you reckon? Coronation Street, tonight. Hello there, lots of sunshine around the country today and it looks like it'll stay fine and sunny right through the weekend, although some parts would definitely rather see some rain in the forecast. It was a great day in Christchurch for building sand castles at New Brighton Beach, but these three-dimensional masterpieces were part of a competition for first-year students of the Design and Arts College. They were made with the help of garden tools, food colouring and natural objects found in the beach. And a pleasant high of 22 in Christchurch this afternoon. In the Cargill, though, was cooler on 18 with cloud cover. Up to 26 in Alexandra, but the national high was 28, recorded in Hanmer Springs. Brilliant day in Wellington to welcome the Volvo yachts. Sunny skies, a moderate northerly and a high of 24. A solid 3-metre swell and light winds made for excellent surfing conditions in the west from Taranaki through to Northland. Auckland, Hamilton and Thames had a high of 25. Now we've got a large high sitting right on top of us that kept the nation mostly fine today. You can just see some high cloud here being whisked over the southern parts here in the strong upper level westerly flow. And a weak trough stalled near Auckland this afternoon bringing in cloud and one or two light showers. The high is not set to go anywhere in a hurry so another fine day for most places tomorrow. Just a few showers about the south coast as this weak front here flicks past. 
So mainly fine and sunny with light winds over the South Island. Just a few showers about southern Fiordland and coastal Southland and one or two sneaking around the corner into southern Otago with a southwest change. Pretty quiet over the North Island, clear skies for most places, just a few clouds brushing Northland and the southeasterly flow up there. We've got light winds or sea breezes everywhere else. So a few showers and a southwest change for Invercargill, sunshine and very warm, 39, 29 degrees for Alexandra. Mainly fine through here, just some morning cloud for coasters and some cloud in the evening for Kaikoura. Blue skies and lots of sunshine from Nelson through to Levin, light winds or afternoon sea breezes. But same deal for this group, a very summery Friday with uh, not much wind, mild night on the way with uh, lows of 15 or 16. Same forecast through here, well how many different ways can you say fine weather with light winds? We've got an afternoon sea breeze for Gisborne and it's mainly fine up here but the southeasterly over Northland will drag a few clouds in over Whangarei and Kaitaia. Mainly fine in Dunedin, a westerly wind first up, then a southwest change in the afternoon brings in some cloud, a high of 21. Sunshine for the Garden City, light winds and a high there of 22. Another stunning day on the way for Wellington. Northerly breeze will turn southerly in the afternoon and 22 the high. Simple forecast for Hamilton, blue skies, light winds and a high of 25. And same for Auckland, loads of sunshine, a maximum of around 24 and light winds or sea breezes. Thundery showers for Darwin, Brisbane, Sydney and Canberra tomorrow. Sunny and warm in Melbourne with a high of 31. And up in the Isles, showers laced with thunder for the Solomon Islands. A few splashes for Newey, but it's very fine everywhere else. Another fine day on the way for the North Island on Saturday. Mainly fine over the South Island. Just some patchy drizzle about the fjords. And on Sunday, the drizzle spreads as far north as the glaciers. It stays fine everywhere else. Mainly fine tomorrow on the Chatham Islands, and it should stay fine there right through until Tuesday. Brendan's back with you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks very much, Karen. And news just in, the Tokelau Islands will remain a colony of New Zealand. The vote just failed to reach the two-thirds majority required for self-government. Now here's Susan McLean.